Welcome YMCA members and guests. My name is Charlie and I am your virtual instructor for today's lesson. Thank you for choosing the YMCA of San Francisco as your place for community and learning. We're so glad you're here. This week we're going to be talking about plate tectonics and to do so we're going to be doing some fun experiments involving milk, graham crackers, cocoa powder, and whipped cream. So some very yummy things. Last week we did an experiment about the rock cycle involving Starburst. So if you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to go check that one out because that material is going to be very relevant to what we're talking about today. Last week we talked about the three types of rocks that exist on the planet and how they can all transform into one another and how they all combine to form the crust of the earth. And we're going to be talking a lot more today about the crust of the earth and what exactly is going on with it. So what you need to know is that below the crust of the earth, there's a lot going on because there's different layers of the earth beneath it. So at the very center of the earth, we have the earth's core, which is insanely, insanely hot. And above the core, we have what's called the mantle, which is also insanely hot, though not quite as insanely hot as the core. And then above the mantle, we have the crust. So the crust of the earth is broken up into many different pieces that we call plates. So if you look at this map here, you'll see that the earth is broken up into several different plates. And on top of those plates are our continents. You may or may not know this, but there didn't actually used to be separate continents. Hundreds of millions of years ago, the earth was just one big continent called Pangaea. And over the course of hundreds of millions of years, Pangaea broke up into separate pieces that we call continents that very slowly moved apart into the formation we now know as Earth. Now, why did this happen? Well, heat causes matter, like land, to move. And so the heat coming from the mantle, which is right below the crust of the Earth, caused all these different plates to move. And we're gonna do an experiment right now that's gonna demonstrate what that process looked like. All right, so what we have going on here is we have a pot that is full of milk at the bottom and the milk is representing our mantle that in real life is composed primarily of molten rock. And on top of the milk, we have a layer of cocoa powder, which is representing the crust of the earth. So we're gonna see, once we heat this pot up some, how the hot mantle is going to affect the crust. Okay, so we've been heating up this pot for about 20 minutes on very low heat. And as you can see, we're finally starting to see some cracks. So what's happening, is our mantle milk is starting to warm up enough that it is going to cause the crust of the earth to break into separate pieces here. So we can see now that our hot mantle is starting to rise from below and we're starting to see some pretty significant cracks show up in the surface as Pangaea is going to slowly start breaking into separate continents that will eventually float away, so to speak. And now, as we can see, our delicious chocolate mantle is going to start overflowing a little bit. Okay, now you can see over here on the right, a piece is broken off into its own little continent. And we sort of have four different corners here of different little continents forming with their own cracks within. Okay, now you can see there's a piece that's breaking off from everything else and floating away in a process known as continental drift. So goodbye, Pangaea. Hello, planet chocolate Earth. So that's an activity you can try at home if you like. One pro tip if you do do it is to use a thick enough layer of cocoa powder on top of the milk that you'll be able to see the cracks because if the layer is too thin, it'll dissolve too quickly and you won't be able to see the cracks as well. So now that we've done a broad overview of how plate tectonics have formed our world, I want to get more specific into how different plates interact with one another and what that looks like. So what we have to do this part, which you can also do at home, is we have our layer of whipped cream here, which represents the mantle of the earth, which is below the crust of the earth. And then we have a couple pieces of graham cracker, which are going to represent the crust in the form of two separate plates. So we'll do a close up to show the three different ways that plates can interact with one another. So the first type of boundary we're going to talk about is called a divergent plate boundary. And divergent plate boundaries occur at the bottom of ocean floors. And what happens is we have our two separate plates here. And the way divergent plate boundaries occur is when these plates decide to move away from one another. 
So over the course of a very long time, they move away from another. And then the mantle, represented by the whipped cream, in between, remember the mantle is very, very hot. But when these plates move apart from one another, the mantle in between the plates is gonna cool down and form new crust in between in the form of mountain ranges underwater that we call ridges. And the most famous example of a real world ridge is called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which is a ridge in the Atlantic Ocean that spans 10,000 miles. It's crazy, crazy long. The next type of plate boundary we're gonna talk about is called the transform plate boundary, which can occur between oceanic plates or continental plates. And what happens with transform plate boundaries is when these plates are, are scraping against each other like so. So they're kind of going up and down and scraping. And as you can see and kind of here with graham crackers, it's not exactly a smooth process for these to go up and down each other like so. And what happens when they're scraping against each other is they can create earthquakes. And here in California, we know all about earthquakes because we are situated on top of a very famous transform plate boundary called the San Andreas Fault, which spans 750 miles up and down the state. The last type of boundary we're gonna talk about is called convergent plate boundaries. And convergent plate boundaries happen when plates collide into one another. And there's a lot of different things that can happen when plates converge. For one, convergent plate boundaries are the cause of a lot of earthquakes, like the transform plate boundaries. But there's also certain features that can be made from boundaries colliding. So to demonstrate one of those, we're gonna take our graham crackers and dip the tips in a glass of water for just a second. So just like that. Take the other end like that. And then we're gonna put them on our mantle here. And watch what happens when these two plates converge. They're gonna kind of push one another up and they form something vertically. And so that is gonna represent mountain ranges. So that's one result of convergent plate boundaries is they can make really tall mountain ranges, most famously the Himalayan mountains, which is the mountain range in Asia that includes many of Earth's highest peaks, including Mount Everest. Another thing that can happen with convergent plates is when oceanic plates converge with continental plates. And what can happen there, this represents our oceanic plate, and this is our continental, what will happen when these collide often is that the oceanic plate will go under the continental plate because it's not quite as firm and hard as the continental plate and go down like so. And a couple things happen. This is a process called subduction when the oceanic plate goes under the continental plate. And a couple things can happen during subduction. For one, it can create oceanic trenches, uh, which are deep parts of the ocean floor, most famously the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest known point in the ocean, as deep as 36,000 feet in some places. And another thing that can happen during subduction is that magma can be released from the mantle as a result of this oceanic plate going down under here. And as that magma rises to the Earth's crust, it can form volcanoes. That's gonna wrap up our lesson today. So thank you for participating in virtual lessons with the YMCA of San Francisco. If you end up trying this activity out, we'd love to see it on social media. Just post the photo on Instagram and tag us on at YMCASF or hashtag YMCASF. And I encourage you to get creative with how you do your plate tectonics. You don't necessarily need graham crackers or whipped cream. You could try out a lot of different household materials or foods to try to create the same effect of seeing how boundaries interact. Um, so just get creative with it. We're also offering lots of other fun lessons you can follow on this YouTube channel. Make sure to check them out as well. And thank you for being part of our YMCA community. We'll see you again soon.